If you were to give some advice to your friend who started TFT a few weeks ago, you would talk about the hidden rules like the number of champions in the pool or the new rule about the headliner that came with the recent patch. And your friend would say something like, thanks bro, I didn't know, is there a place I could learn more of this? And your answer would be, well, not really. But what I just mentioned are only the secret tips that most of the core TFT community knows. So what if I told you there are even more secret rules than these secret tips most players don't know and it's nearly impossible to find anywhere. And you can go on Twitch and ask to be streamers, but most of the time your messages will be flooded by 7TV emotes. In this video, I'm sharing 10 hidden rules secret tips and dark TFT knowledge that most people don't know so you can get an edge when you play your ranked games. I also made a written version of this video so you can use it as your cheat sheet if you want to. It's on tacted.com and it's completely free. You can find this article and all the other guides I made with the link in the description. And by the way, you can put a like on the guide if you like it. That helps me quite a lot actually. Tactor is also the sponsor of my channel and is a place where you can find many meta guides and cheat sheets like this one. All right, let's start with the first trick. If you happen to have an item anvil, I suggest you to open it just before the carousel round so you can see the options offered to you and pick the perfect item on the carousel. This helps quite a lot if you are chasing a specific item. And in this example, I saw that I had a bow as an option with the anvil. So I tried to get the other bow in the carousel to make red buff. If I couldn't get that bow, I will have gone for another item to complete immediately. The first one is that if you see a highliner in your shop, then the next time you see see the same unit as a headliner, it will have a different trait highlighted. The second rule is that if you skip a specific headliner in your shop, then you won't see the unit as a headliner before a couple of shops. Basically, it means that if you skip a Yone hot steel headliner, then you won't see any Yone headliner in your next seven shops and the next Yone you will see will either be Crowd Diver or Edgelord. Hey, this is for before the future and I just saw the Mordok post to have a bit more clarity on this trick. Actually, there are a couple of things I didn't mention because I wasn't aware and people are generally not aware. So there are two things I wanted to say first. It's how it is before 14.2 and how it is after 14.2, patch 14.2. It depends on when you watch the video. So let's say you watch this video after the patch 14.2. There's just one more rule you need to understand is that if you have a headliner with plus one trait and you skip it, you can't see another Headliner with the exact plus one trait for four shops. Basically, if you skip a Lux Dazzler, you can have a Bard Jazz as a headliner in your shop, but you can't have a Bard Dazzler in the four next shops. So that's pretty much it. And the trick I'm going to explain a little bit later, you can just forget about it because it's only relevant for patch 14.1. So just a couple days since the release of this video. If you are uh, watching this video and still playing in patch 14.1, then you have another rule that you need to understand. It's a little bit different from what I just said. If you skip a Lux Dazzler headliner, you can't find any bard in the four next shop. Even if it's bard jazz, you can't find it just because he shares Dazzler. It's the same with EDM. So you can't find any Jax or you can't find any Zac or Zed, but that's pretty much it. This will be removed in the next patch. And the only way to counter this is to use the trick I'm going to describe just right now. A lot of people already know that, but there's another secret rule. If you buy and sell immediately the headliner, then you can bypass the second rule I just said and have a chance to find it faster. So basically, if you play a reroll comp, but don't get the Highliner proc you wanted. You can buy it and then sell it immediately to have a bigger chance to find the Highliner you want sooner. Next trick is about augments. In TFT, there are augments related to specific traits such as too big to fail for breezers, double the funk for disco, and so on. These augments randomly appear at stage two, but they can only appear in stage three or stage four if you have the relevant trait activated. You can abuse this knowledge by specifically removing traits at stage three one or 4 one to increase the odds of finding the tailored augment you want. In this example, I only had bruisers activated during stage 3-1. It also means that I had a 0% chance to find leaf for longer, metal heads, bounty hunter, double the funk, and raise the tempo because I didn't activate these traits. By reducing the amount of augments I could get offered, I got a higher chance to find too big to fail, which is completely broken at the moment I'm writing this video. So remember to always tailor your board 
hold at 3 1 and 4 1 if you are looking for a specific augment to increase your odds of hitting that augment. If you play hard steel with raise the stakes, but someone else is doing the same as you, you will want to optimize your positioning to make sure you lose while keeping all your hard steel units on the board, because obviously you want to stack more hearts. Most people know they can block a unit in the corner by adding two ranged champions, but they often forget they also need to put other melee champions on the third and fourth row. In this example, the streamer forced Aphelios and Nami to move forward to hit Yune, leaving space for Set to move and be unblocked. This positioning made the streamer lose the round so he could stack even more hearts while denying the hearts to stacks of his opponents. There is a hidden item distribution rule. To make it short, if you already drop a specific item, you're less likely to drop another one. This rule was added a long time ago to avoid having games with 5 cloaks dropped from PvE and making it frustrating and, you know, like unplayable. This is extremely important to know because let's say you already dropped 2 swords in your game and you made a death blade. Then maybe you want to build infinity age to complete your AD carry stuff. But now you are at the carousel and you have the choice between a sword and gloves in order to try to make an infinity Edge with the items you will drop later on the PV rounds. In this situation, the smartest move is to pick a sword at the carousel because you already got two swords earlier, so it's almost impossible for you to get another sword later. Instead, you have much more chances to find gloves on the PV after because you didn't drop any gloves sooner. This is why it's important to track what items you dropped earlier and pick the components you want on the carousel according to what you already dropped. This way you have more chance to complete perfect items at the end of the game. If you play a comp that requires precise positioning or if you have a Zephyr or Shroud of Stillness, then you should use this trick to always beat your opponent. This only works on PC but you have to click and hold on your unit then press 1 or 3 to switch the boards until you get on the board of the guy you are going to face. Then wait the last second, come back to your board by pressing 2 and release the unit wherever you want to. A lot of players like to reposition in the last second and this should help you to be fast enough and react accordingly to make sure you don't get tricked by others. If you get a map that makes you start with a 3 cost unit or 3 1 cost units and you dropped 6 gold on the first PV round, you need to try to make 10 gold at stage 1-3 by placing only one unit who can solo the 3 minions. This allows you to get interest gold much sooner than anyone else so you can create a significant economic advantage. However, only a few units can solo the 3 minions. 2 safe units are Tamkench and Olaf, but you can also win with Evelyn and Lilia or Tarik if you have belt to give them to make sure you have 100% win rate. Now let's talk about a mistake you should avoid if you are playing any melee units carries like Zed or Riven. Most players know you have to put your main carry behind your strongest tank so your Riven or Zed won't be targeted as long as your main tank remains alive. However, if you pick the Omen crush test dummies or if you have something like Zizirot, they will take the aggro away from your main tank and they will die quite fast right after. This will often lead your melee carry in a vulnerable position while your main tank remains untouched. This is why if you plan to play melee carries like Zed or even, try to avoid omens like crush test dummies or to get the support item like Zizirot. If you get an artifact anvil from Hearthsteel during stage 3, don't open it before stage 4. There's a secret rule that prevents you from getting some artifact after stage 3. These artifacts are Mogul, Goldmancer, Collector, Gumbless Blade and Diamond Hand. And it's good because you don't really want to get them at stage 4 because they don't have real value anymore. You might already know that if you skip an augment, you will never see it again during your game. But there's a way to abuse this information if you are playing in the Silver Symphony map that makes you play with 3 Silver Augments. There are 20 possible Silver Augments you can get at stage 4 too. But if you reward all the Augments during stage 2, 1 and 3, 2, because you reward them, you won't be able to see them again at stage 4, 2. You can have a fair amount of chance to hit Recombobulator at stage 42 if you didn't see it before, obviously. It means that if you get into this map, you can roll down at stage 41 to make a 3 star throw cost champion like Yone or Riven, and then transforming into a 3 star focus unit thanks to Recombo. And yes, this is a little bit like gambling, but for sure, if you roll all your silver augment at stage 21 and 32 without finding Recombobulator, then you have quite a good amount of chance to find it at 42. 
I'm quite curious to know how many of these tricks you already knew and used regularly in your games. Tell me in the comments and maybe I'll make another video like this one if I feel like it's useful to you. Obviously these tricks are useful to know but they won't make you climb from platinum to master. If you feel like you are stuck in your elo but don't know exactly how to improve or how to get out from this elo, you can check this video where I give you the exact method to find your weaknesses in TFT and how to fix them so you can turbo grind. Until the next video, see you at the top of the ladder.